service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. You find the AccuWeather forecast right across the top of this in all CNC local news pages. And what we're doing here today is trying to create a brighter future than what we experienced in December. And we will do that by passing this bill. I vote in the affirmative. Mr. Lentall in the affirmative. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Eyes 104, nose 43. The bill is passed. The New York State Assembly has passed, and Governor Andrew Cuomo has signed into law one of the nation's toughest gun control measures, the first to be adopted since the mass shootings last month in Newtown, Connecticut, and in West Webster. The bill passed the Democratic Majority State Assembly Tuesday afternoon after being approved Monday night in the Republican-controlled State Senate. Both houses passed the measure by substantial margins. What the governor calls the New York SAFE Act expands the state's ban on so-called assault weapons bans high-capacity ammunition magazines, and toughens provisions aimed at keeping guns out of the hands of convicted felons and potentially dangerous mental health patients. Rifles and shotguns that include a pistol grip are added to the assault weapons list under New York law. Owners will have a year to either register the weapons with state police or get rid of them. Under the legislation, New York will be the first state in the nation to ban any magazine that can hold more than seven rounds and to run instant background checks on all ammunition purchases at the time of sale. The legislation will allow authorities to track ammunition purchases in real time, alert law enforcement to high volume buys. It also requires pistol permit holders to recertify their carry permits every five years. The legislation also closes the so-called private sale loophole, makes sure that all gun purchases even at gun shows are subject to background checks. And finally, it toughens criminal penalties on those who use illegal guns to commit crimes, including making it a felony to fire on a first responder. The governor calls that the Webster provision in honor of the two firefighters killed and two wounded in that incident. Governor Cuomo said the new law will limit gun violence. Coming up with a system that allows for mental health screens, which then means you need a database of ownership so you can actually do those screens. You need a background check at a dealer, you need a background check when you buy it privately. And this is the first system that actually implements that. Debate in the state assembly broke down along urban-rural lines. A number of upstate Republicans representing areas where people are raised with firearms condemned the act and the speed with which top lawmakers and the governor drafted it. This bill will affect those who do not commit crimes. And those who commit crimes will not be affected by this bill. Therefore, I vote against it. Thank you. Republican Mark Butler represents the Mohawk Valley, including Ilion, which happens to be the home of Remington Arms, a major employer in his district. We're taking up a bill that, number one, tramples on the constitutional rights of our constituents to legally possess firearms, that uses a process to bring this bill floor by fiat rather than a legislative process that allows for public input and reasoned deliberation, and finally has the potential to put at risk hundreds of jobs in the already economically depressed Mohawk Valley. The NRA issued a statement saying, in part, the National Rifle Association and our New York members are outraged at the draconian gun control bill that was rushed through the process late Monday evening. These gun control schemes have failed in the past and will have no impact on public safety and crime. The Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra Board of Directors has reached a new four-year contract agreement with the orchestra musicians. Terms of the contract have not been announced. The RPO Board reached agreement with the Musicians Negotiating Committee, the collective bargaining unit for the musicians. Committee co-chair Wesley Nance said the agreement includes painful concessions the first two years with restorations in years three and four. He says it recognizes the tough financial challenges of the orchestra while trying to meet the needs of the musicians. Orchestra President and CEO Charles Owens said the RPO annual campaign has reached $1.6 million. It's about $184,000 ahead of this time last year. There's been concern over the continued level of community financial support after the board's dismissal of music director Ariel Remerite.
The Monroe County Sheriff's Department has charged a man with DWI after he put his SUV onto the porch of a house on Clarkson Hamlin Town Line Road. Deputies said the man crashed about 11 Monday night when he failed to stop at the intersection with Drake Road, went over a berm, into the yard, and up on the front porch. The house received minor damage, so did the driver. They took him to Strong Memorial to be patched up. And the Livingston County Sheriff's Department says a Springwater woman has been charged with petty larceny and criminal possession of controlled substances. They say while working at a local nursing facility, Lisa Jacobs was underdosing the residents and keeping the pills for herself. The 29-year-old LPN was arrested and arraigned in Mount Morris Town Court after the nursing home staff tipped off investigators. Deputies aren't saying which nursing facility was involved. To the left of the player window, you'll find links to these and other stories on CNC News, and at the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news items directly to us. We are a community news resource, so let us know about your birth, wedding announcements, business openings, all that sort of thing is of interest to us. Next news is as it happens. Updates are when necessary. You help us be the judge of that. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.